I'm Felix. I'm one of about 75,000 children, youth planting trees all around the world to tackle the climate crisis. When I was nine years old in fourth grade, my teacher asked me to give a little presentation in my class about the climate crisis. And when I prepared that presentation, I heard about Vangari Matai, the Nobel Peace Prize laureate who had started a movement to plant 30 million trees with lots of other women across Kenya and East Africa. So we thought we should plant some trees as well, and we set ourselves a target, one million trees in each country of the world. But I don't think any of us knew what a million was or even how many countries existed. <laughs> but a few weeks later, we planted our first tree, and we were incredibly lucky because two local journalists showed up and reported about that tree. And that's why, that's why some other local schools planted some trees as well. And we found a slightly older student who created a very simple website for us. And that website was essentially just a ranking among local schools of who had planted the most trees. So lots of schools started to want to outcompete their neighboring schools, wanted to be at the top of our leaderboard, and this is how Plant for the Planet spread. After one year, we had planted about 50,000 trees. After three years, one million. And children and youth all across the world started joining us and started planting trees with us. And all these children and youth started to do a lot more than just uh, plant trees. They started giving presentations in their classes, but then also in, uh, in front of rotary clubs. They started talking to their mayors and other government officials. Many spoke in front of their national parliaments or had sit-downs with their presidents. And on three occasions, our members have even spoken in front of the UN General Assembly. And I want to just tell you one example. This is Jana. She's 12 years old. And a few months ago, she gave a talk at a conference just after the CEO of Deutsche Bank and her governor. And people were so impressed that journalists only reported about her. <laughs> and a few weeks later, she got an invitation from her governor for a sit-down meeting. So she went there and explained to him for half an hour that he needs to make his state the first carbon neutral state. And actually, I just heard a few days ago that few, a few days ago, she got an invitation to meet him again. So I'm very excited about how that will turn out. And none of this is an accident because we organize Plant for the Planet academies all around the world to empower our young members to do exactly that. So at these academies, we bring together lots of kids, and they learn about climate change, why it's so important to plant trees, and most importantly, they make plans of what they want to do next. And so far, we've organized about 1,200 such academies in 71 countries. And maybe this is why, um, after Vangari Matai passed away in 2011, the UN Environment Program asked us to lead the Billion Tree Campaign, the campaign she had initially started. That campaign had the incredible goal of planting a billion trees, but became so successful that by now 13.6 billion trees have been planted globally, thanks to governments, organizations, and companies all across the world contributing. And this is why, a few years ago, we started asking ourselves, where do we go from here? What's the next step? And because of that, we had two big questions. I think very obvious questions. The first one was, how many trees even exist globally? And the second question was, how many additional trees could we plant? And we obviously thought that those were very simple questions. So we asked a couple of ecologists and a couple of climate scientists, but soon noticed that nobody had any real answers for us. Until we found three phenomenal scientists at Yale University who did a three-year research project for us and came back to us with two important answers. The first one is that about three trillion trees exist globally. And to give you a bit of context, we used to have about double as many trees, but in human history, we reduced them to three trillion. And the second, more important answer was they did a study to figure out how many additional trees we could plant without competing with agriculture and other land uses. And they concluded that we could increase our global forest cover by up to 30% to four trillion trees. And if we managed to plant these trees, they would capture about a third of all human-made carbon emissions. 
So obviously they wouldn't solve the climate crisis, but they would be a sort of time joker, allowing us to actually keep our Paris commitments and ensure that climate change temperature rise does not rise beyond two degrees. And what I think is most amazing, most fabulous about all of this is that by far the most potential for new forests exists in, in Africa and Latin America. So by planting trees there, we can also tackle global inequality by creating hundreds of millions of jobs and an incredible amount of wealth through these wonderful resources. And through those years in our work, we also noticed that it's not just about the number of trees we plant, but also about how we plant them. And that became incredibly clear to me when we had a little project with a local government in southern Mexico. And during the project, we found out that the average survival rate of local tree planting projects was just 22%. So they planted lots and lots of trees, but if you came back to a year later, only 22% survived. So we wanted to show that it's possible to restore forests more efficiently and more effectively. And this is why we took over the responsibility of 22,000 hectares of degraded forest, degraded rainforest. And we started restoring um, that area. Today, we have over 100 employees there and plant on average one tree every 15 seconds. And we've now achieved a survival rate of not 22, but 94%. And it only costs us an average one euro per planted tree. So how do we fund all of this? Um, obviously, we've got private donors. We've got some companies helping us. But the main way we fund our trees is actually chocolate. And this started about eight years ago when um, we wanted to do a project um, with the German chocolate industry. But not a single company wanted to support us. And this is when one of our members, Max, I think he was like uh, 11 at the time, said, let's make our own chocolate. <laughs> and of course, we all laughed at first. But this turned into the change chocolate, which is, of course, fair trade and carbon neutral. And with every five bars of the chocolate, we can plant a tree because the entire profit from the chocolate goes directly into tree planting. And it has now actually become the most sold fair trade chocolate in Germany. And currently, we're also working on an app for the chocolate. So if you're out in the city near a store that sells the chocolate, you'll hear a beep in your pocket and know where to go shopping. <laughs> And a few years ago, we asked the astronauts on the International Space Station if they wanted to try as well. And a few months later, six, uh, 12 bars of the chocolate were on board the Albert Einstein. Yeah. So two bars of chocolate for every astronaut. And since then, we call our chocolate astronaut food. <laughs> and in all of these years, we, we, keeping, we, we keep trying to figure out new ways to communicate our message. And one of the most effective ways we've discovered so far with our campaign, Stop Talking, Start Planting, where we cover the mouths of famous people to show that something has to happen. For instance, we took one such picture with the King of Spain, <laughs> and the day after we took the picture, it was in all newspapers. <laughs> and, and not just in the newspapers, but on the cover pages. Here it's on the side, but we count that as well. And over those years, many of our members of Plant for the Planet have been protesting around the world. And in 2015, I remember a couple of our members said that we should do a climate strike. We should not go to school and, and strike instead to show how serious we are about this. And so we tried it. And we got like a, a couple of hundred kids in like five countries to participate. And we tried it again the next year, but it just didn't really work, so we kind of gave up on it. And then, a few years later, um, this girl, Greta Thunberg, um, comes and has a similar idea, but does it much, much better. <laughs> and obviously, lots of our members have been um, joining her since then. And what she has achieved is absolutely phenomenal. And I mention this because she has become my second um, big hero next to Vangari Matai. And I think, um, actually, her work hasn't made as big of a splash here in the US because your news cycle is a bit more distracted than in some other countries. <laughs> but but it, it's made a huge difference in Germany 
Um, her work has been dominating our headlines since the beginning of this year. And polls have shown that at the beginning of this year, 9% of Germans believed that climate change was our biggest issue. And just a month ago, 24% of Germans said climate change was our biggest issue. And that was all thanks to her and all her supporters. So one last thing I want to tell you. We noticed, right, we're planting a lot of trees, but even if we continue scaling up, we might be able to plant 100 million by 2030, but nowhere close to the 1 trillion we need to get planted. So we want to make it as easy as possible for anyone around the world to join in and help us. And because of that, for the last two years, we've been building an app that we're going to launch officially this September. And the app is very simple. You sign up and you have your own personal tree counter. And if you then go outside and plant a tree, you can register that tree and say what kind of tree you planted, when you planted it, where exactly you planted it, and so on. And if you're very enthusiastic, you can also add measurements of the trees as it grows. And, but there's obviously a lot of people that might, not, might be too lazy to plant trees themselves or just couldn't, can't plant trees themselves. So what these people can do is they can go in this app and discover tree planting projects all around the world. And for every tree planting project, you discover what the average price per tree is, what the survival rate is, um, what kinds of trees they, they plant. And you can see satellite images of these projects and also how these projects have been developing over time. And then you can select your favorite project and donate directly through the app. And what's also really important is that we won't take any of the money, but 100% of the money goes directly to the tree planting project. And there's obviously a few other tools to make sure that this is fun to use, like competitions and a new type of Forbes list that ranks people not by how much money they have, but by how many trees they've planted. <laughs> so if you want to um, try um, and see what this app uh, looks like, the beta, uh, beta version is already available in the App Store and the Android um, Play Store. Trees are very simply the only machines we have that can capture CO2. And this is why our message is stop talking, start planting. Thank you.